What is up guys, it's Tessex Modern Warfare here, GamerTab Banjo Chicken, and welcome back to another episode of JTAG Tutorials. So in this tutorial we're looking at how to install skins, title updates, and covers for the Aurora dashboard. So the reason we're doing this is that uh, Freestyle Dash has completely screwed up lately. I don't know what the hell's going on with it, but the servers are down. You can't download title updates anymore on Freestyle Dash. You can't uh, automatically download game covers. It's just all completely screwed up right now. So Aurora seems to be the way to go. It looks like they're trying to force people to use Aurora now uh, by taking down the Freestyle Dash servers, which really does kind of suck because I don't think Aurora's quite there yet. It's it's almost, you know, it's it's getting there definitely, but I still think they should be supporting Freestyle Dash at least until Aurora's like got, you know, is fully complete. Um, but yeah, anyway. So basically we're going to go through and get Aurora all set up kind of the same way we did with Freestyle Dash in episode 8 and uh, yeah get title updates, install skins um, and do all that cool stuff and covers, get covers downloaded, cover downloading working and all that. So I will also have a tutorial on Link coming soon as well, how to set up Link on the Aurora dashboard also. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, uh, to get skins or add-ons or any of that kind of stuff, you want to head over to the realmodscene.com and click on the forms when you get on there and scroll down. You've got uh, Aurora releases, support, and you want to go to skins, cover flow, layouts, and scripts. And down here you have pretty much all of that stuff. So you can go ahead and download custom skins like the Xbox One skin, which is the one that... Um, that I'm using for this example and yeah there's a bunch of different skins here that people are making also little add-ons and plug-in patches like the HUD scene changes the uh, HUD icons and stuff like that uh, which I'm also going to show you guys how to install in this video as well so yeah go ahead check this out have a look see what uh, what ones that you like and go ahead and download them and once you have them downloaded we're going to copy it over to a USB stick so we're going to open up our USB and I've already got it on here but what you would do is you would open it up and extract the folder into the USB and then do the same for the HUD scene icons if you're doing any icon changes so just copy the plugin folder into your USB stick and then we plug that USB into the console and I'll show you guys what you have to do from there. Okay, so we're on XCX menu now. Now what you want to do is, I mean, you can use any other file browser. It's up to you which one you want to use. But if you're using XCX menu, you want to go ahead and head to wherever you have Aurora installed. Head in there and press X. Go to USB 1 or, well, your USB stick. Select the skin that we're going to use, which is the Aurora 1 skin. We're going to press Y, press A to copy. Press X, go back to the hard drive or wherever Aurora is, is the Aurora is installed. Head into Skins and paste it in here, and that's your custom skin installed. Okay, so as for the um, as for the plugin or the HUD scene icons, what you're going to want for that is to grab the one that's on the USB sticks. So go into the plugin folder. Go into the HUD scene folder and copy the image folder. So press Y, press A to copy it. Head to the hard drive. Then go in the same place in the Aurora directory. So plugins, HUD scene, press Y and paste to overwrite the images folder. And that is how you install them. And that's it. So now we can just run the Aurora.xcx and we have our custom skin and our custom icons installed. You have to obviously manually uh, select the skin for it to appear, um, but at the moment, yeah, the HUD icons have changed, as you can see here. So there's a, this is not necessarily the best one I've come across, but um, you can get a bunch of different ones, that even ones that have different colors. But um, yeah, it's pretty good if you go into System Link when you're in a game uh, for Link, then I believe there's a lot more icons in there too. Uh, so before we actually uh, enable that custom skin that we installed to have a look at it, what we're going to do is get title updates and cover downloading working. So what you're going to need for this 
get all these games showing up in your library and being able to download covers. So first things first is to make sure that you are connected to the internet on your console. Uh, so what you want to do then is press the back button and you can see I have a valid IP address at the top left corner. Now, if you do not have a valid IP address, then you need to hook up your Xbox to your, your network. Um, if you have maybe an unbanned key vault on your NAND and you don't want it to get banned by accidentally connecting to the internet, then you can go ahead and enable live block in Dash Launch. So if you just head into Dash Launch, head into the network tab, and then select live block and make sure that's enabled and that will prevent any key vaults from getting banned from you connecting to the internet. And then you just press X to save settings to launch.ini file. Now what we're also going to do to make sure that we can connect to the internet is head back to the normal dashboard by dashboarding and holding down right bumper, head into system, network settings, uh, your network whether it's wired or wireless, and then test PC connection. I always recommend testing PC connection Never do Xbox Live connection because Xbox Live connection, if you have Live Block enabled, it's just going to give you a DNS error and you're not going to be able to get a proper reading. Um, it's just pointless. Uh, do a PC connection. So all you need is a, a computer that's switched on and connected to your network and then you can do a test PC connection. And if this test passes, then that's it. You're connected to the internet on your console without connecting to Xbox Live. Alright, so once you have confirmed that you have a network connection all set up on your console, we're now ready to go ahead and add our game. So to start adding games, you're going to press Start button and scroll down to Content Scanning. Now, you could do it the quick way, which is to just add one game path to whatever drive contains all your games on it. So if I add a game path, select Change, and say my... Um, say my USB 0, it's my external hard drive, say that drive has all my games on it, which it pretty much does, it has most of my games on it, then I could just select that whole drive and then put a highish scan depth and then I'm still not sure about script data, what you're supposed to select for this because I mean it only has applications, emulators and homebrew, whereas an Xbox 360 game is Xbox 360, it's none of those, it doesn't fall into any of those categories. So I just leave it on none. Not sure if that's what I'm supposed to do, but it seems to work fine. And then you just press A to save. And that's just gonna scan the entire hard drive for all the XEX files that are on there, and then it'll add them into your quick launch home screen. So yeah, that's a pretty quick and easy way of doing it, but the problem is you get a lot of duplicates showing up, a lot of duplicate games, like you might have five copies of Modern Warfare 2 for some reason, even though you only have one. Um, you may have multiple uh, ones with missing covers and stuff like that. So what I prefer to do, and it's it takes longer, but it's just to add each game one by one. So to do that, you would just select whatever game, let's see... Uh, pick a game that I don't already have added, of course. Dead Island will do. Um, so select the directory that has the game in it, or the XCX file in it. Select the scan depth, one, two, so yeah, just leave the scan depth on two. And we can go ahead and save. And that will add that one game in. Right there, you can see it's because we've connected to our network, it's downloading the cover and the information about the game automatically downloads. Obviously, if you're not connected to the internet, then that's not going to happen. So if you've added your game paths while not connected to the internet and you've got missing cover, and then you reconnect to the internet, then you can get the cover once you've connected to the internet by pressing Y to go to details and then scrolling down to preview and pressing left on the D-pad which switches it to refresh. You press A on that and that will just basically refresh it and look for all the artwork and re-download all the artwork for it. And yeah, then you'll hopefully have the cover by then. So that's how you add the games. Okay, so now to get title updates for the games, what you want to do is go ahead and select the game with the Y button to go to the details. 
scroll down to the controller icon and you can use the d-pad again to switch it from title updates to dlc so make sure it's on title updates press a press right bumper select the title update from the marketplace that you want and it will start downloading once it's finished downloading you can press left bumper and that shows you all the title updates that you have currently downloaded and then you just press A to enable whichever title update you're wanting to use. Now whenever you launch the game from the Aurora dashboard, it will be running on that title update. Okay, so that is pretty much it. And you can see from me adding each individual game like that, it's, you know, it's just neater. Each game, like, I the first time I installed Aurora, just for the the JTA tutorial episode on it, I just added like the whole drive in as one big path and I had like, you know, five copies of Modern Warfare 2, four copies of Black Ops 1 for some reason and it just completely screwed up. So I prefer each individual game, adding each individual game and that way it's nice and neat. But um, in fact, there's probably a smarter way of doing it where you don't have to add as many paths and you still don't get duplicates. But um, that's how I do it anyway, it works. So. That's pretty much it guys, all we have to do now is press Y to go into, or not Y, we press B uh, and to actually apply our custom skin we just have to scroll down to skin, select change and then select our custom skin that we added, so uh, Aurora 1 from Max Mod and we go ahead and just press back, press uh, back again to go into system or tools and press A to restart and that will restart the dashboard and when it restarts we should have our custom skin yep there we go Xbox One skin and what's cool about the Aurora dashboard is that people right away are changing the whole layout of things if you look at the bottom you can see it's different now instead of start for uh, settings and back for system we now just have start for home um, and if I press that then we get a little kind of Xbox One home screen that's got all of our settings in here, like our uh, main settings here, along with our restart options, launch DVD, shutdown, custom skins, and all of that. Alright guys, so that is basically it. Quite a short video for you today. Uh, Hope you don't mind that. I know it's nothing really complicated, but I just feel that it's probably quite important to just, just to get this video out as quickly as possible after what's happened with Freestyle Dash. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys can all hop on Aurora and, and be happy with it to a certain extent. I do like the dashboard, I've said before, I like Aurora. I do prefer Freestyle Dash though, it just has more in it. It just seems there just seems to be more with Freestyle Dash and definitely a more customization and, and all of that. And Aurora is, you know, it's going to get there and I'm sure it will surpass Freestyle Dash uh, at some point, maybe even soon. Uh, the rate it's developing is, is quite quite um, astonishing actually. It's, it's developing pretty, pretty quickly. Um, another cool thing that's in here that um, I'm not sure if it was in 0 0.4, but you can press uh, left bumper and then you can just select certain things to show up so I can press right bumper and have only Xbox 360 games show up so if I press A now it's just Xbox 360 games I press right bumper again I can say only homebrew apps and then we only get homebrew apps dash launcher and XCX menu I haven't added all my games in here yet I will at some point but um, yeah, just, just a couple for this example. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions. And um, yeah, we'll see about doing more Aurora videos in the future. And definitely stay tuned for my uh, link installation guide on the Aurora dashboard coming soon as well.